Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. My name is Sophia, I'm your host. The aim of Let the Quran Speak is to help you gain deeper insights into Muslims and Islam, as it's practiced here and in other parts of the world. Quebec Premier Pauline Marois has floated the idea of a Charter of Human Values, which would ban conspicuous religious symbols in the public sphere. Is the Charter a good idea? And how would her proposal, if enacted, affect Muslims who are living and working in Quebec? Joining me to discuss the proposed ban on religious symbols, Dr. Shabir Ali, President of the Islamic Information Centre. Dr. Shabir Ali, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. A pleasure to be on. Now, there's been a lot of discussion about this, uh, this proposal, even though the full um, version of it hasn't actually come out yet, and it will come out in days to come. But uh, a lot of discussion, a lot of commentary. Uh, what are your thoughts on what we've seen so far about the proposal? It, this uh, proposal is not a good idea because it is going to discriminate against those Canadians who subscribe to religions which require them to have uh, some such garment or symbol which uh, uh, would be banned by this charter. And so the charter by its very nature will be discriminatory. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the use of the term symbol? I mean, the, 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 the French um, premier, key, the Quebec premier keeps talking about the hijab, um, the kippah being religious symbols. Um, do you think that's an accurate representation of it? Well, uh, obviously when one sees these uh, manifestations, one would uh, know that the kippah represents Judaism, the hijab is worn by Muslim women, and mm -hmm. so one becomes quickly identified by, uh, as a practitioner of a certain faith by just having these things. And in, in that sense, one might say that these are symbols, though technically the, the symbols of the faith, if we look at a world religions textbook, for example, uh, the symbol uh, that commonly represents uh, Judaism would be a star and, and Islam would be a, a crescent with, with a star, um, as, a, as a cross is usually representative of Christianity. So these are technically symbols of, of the faith. Mm -hmm. uh, nonetheless, uh, the other items which you mentioned uh, do bring to mind uh, and, and causes an identification with a certain faith. And in that sense, one might say that they are symbols. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the important thing is that uh, if uh, people uh, had the choice uh, to either use these or not use them uh, as their religions would, would allow them, then uh, it, it would not be an issue. But where, for example, the Muslim woman feels that uh, the uh, particular style of dress is in, not necessarily the style of dress, but the extent of covering mm -hmm. uh, is a, a requirement of the faith, well then, uh, to, to ban this, would be really to ban the Muslim woman from, from serving in the public sphere. Mm -hmm. I mean, people wear the hijab for, for various different reasons, but fundamentally they're wearing it out of, uh, as an act of devotion to God, right? Uh, otherwise they could do any sort of thing, but they're wearing the hijab. So um, to consider it a symbol is, is to me a little bit of a stretch. Um, but this is how it's being referred to. And of course the same thing can be said uh, for uh, a practitioner of the Jewish uh, faith wearing mm -hmm. the kippah. Uh, or a, a practitioner of the Sikh faith uh, wearing the, the turban. Uh, the, these are, are not just simple things that, that people uh, can uh, decide one day to wear or not to wear. Uh, this is something that goes with them everywhere they go. And uh, to say that uh, they have to leave these behind to serve in the public service, uh, and well, then that, that is really in a way to say to them that you are personally not, not welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, at least this is how the message will be received by many. And uh, that will cause uh, people to uh, choosing between the service and the public sphere and their religion, to choose their religion instead. And uh, of course that will exclude from the public sphere uh, much talent and ability and expertise that could be uh, brought for the public benefit. But it also fundamentally is an act of discrimination, whether it was intended so or not. Mm -hmm. and, and it seems like it's intended for integration, but it, it, at the same time it's doing the opposite of that, because it's forcing people to, to choose between their conscience and you know, their job. Right? Yes, and uh, if we want people to integrate, the best way is to make them feel welcome. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we need to change the ideas of people if they have ideas that are counter uh, to integrating policies. 
uh, we need to make people feel that, that they are part of a larger, wider society in which they can serve equally well with all of the uh, other Canadians. And, and we don't make them feel that way if we start uh, picking at their clothing or, uh, or at their religious symbols. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think of the idea that uh, you know, wearing, these, wearing these garments, for example, the headscarf or the kippah, prevents one from acting professionally or neutrally uh, in one's job? I don't think it prevents one from acting neutrally or professionally. In fact, uh, Muslims are required, wherever they go, uh, as practitioners of their faith, to do the best possible job they, they can do. Uh, Muslims are required by their faith to be honest, to be trustworthy, to be dependable, and to uh, vigorously work for the earning that they will receive. Mm -hmm. in, in fact, I preach this often in my Friday sermons, that w when you're going to receive a paycheck, be, be sure that you have actually worked for that paycheck. Uh, otherwise, that pay, if, if it's uh, received by dishonest, uh, uh, means, or y you went there and just pretended to work, for example, uh, just to get that paycheck. You just clocked your time and, and acted as though you're working, but you, but you weren't. Well, then you don't really deserve that pay. And, and as a Muslim, then this is not permissible for you. Uh, so, so a Muslim then has to have this sense of responsibility, and the one who is a practitioner of the faith uh, would, would not only be, be wearing outward symbols of the faith, but should have that inner motivation to do what is right in all circumstances. And that means that, that, that a Muslim employee can, can be and should be uh, a, a person to rely on, uh, one who is trustworthy, can handle cash, and, and you don't have to worry about this person pilfering because that is against his religion. So as much as the Muslim is uh, very serious about uh, the outward uh, appearance of the faith, uh, the, the Muslim should be even more uh, devout inwardly and that would be reflected in his service to the, the society uh, and, and his uh, uh, proper performance on the job. Mm -hmm. Now, Marwa, Marwa, uh, Pauline Marwa has said that uh, a person wearing the headscarf, a Muslim teacher wearing the headscarf, could be seen as inciting um, her, her students to follow Islam. What do you think of that point of view? Well, anything can have an effect on, on, on anyone. Uh, and, and obviously, teachers do have uh, uh, an effect on their, on their students. Caregivers uh, do have an effect on people they are caring for. Um, children naturally are susceptible to influences from people that they look up to, that they respect, those who are caring for them and so on. But uh, that is not a reason for uh, banning the, the, a woman's uh, headscarf in the, in the public sphere. Uh, because you might argue that uh, if, if uh, someone else who is uh, offering the same care uh, was dressed in a skimpy outfit, for example, well then that might be influencing the little girls to start showing off their, their bodies in ways that, 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 that is not decent, mm -hmm. uh, ways that are not decent. Uh, so you can argue it many different ways, uh, but how does this play into the wider picture of Canadian society and what we're trying to cultivate in terms of the openness of, openness of our society, uh, the uh, need for people to think for themselves and to see various options and to uh, pick the options which they find best. Uh, if indeed uh, a, a Muslim woman caring for uh, younger children uh, reflects a sort of decency. Uh, this may in fact be a good counter to much of the uh, immorality that uh, is taking our children away uh, from their parents and from the decency that their, their parents have tried to uh, maintain, whether they are practitioners of the Catholic faith or of Christianity in general or, or, or practitioners of many other uh, faiths, or not even the practitioner of faith. Uh, most parents are, are interested in making sure uh, that their children, uh, as they're growing up and, and their hormones become uh, active, uh, the, the parents are interested in making sure that their children uh, carry themselves about in a responsible and decent way without, of course, denying them uh, the basic freedoms and, and uh, the right to have uh, certain limited pleasures uh, which uh, do not cross the line of decency. So if a Muslim woman, uh, or, or Muslims in general, or anyone for that matter, whether Jewish or, or Buddhist or, or followers of any religion, uh, would uh, in their sphere of activity uh, influence other people for good, then what's wrong with that? Mm -hmm.
Now, you wanted to mention an, a study that you, you heard about um, in Psychology Today. So maybe you can talk about that study and how it relates to the proposal at hand. Actually, it's uh, from the journal called Psychological Science. Okay. And, and that study uh, shows that uh, when, when people have even a limited sort of interaction with a person of another um, uh, culture, then uh, that uh, uh, reduces the potential for discrimination uh, for, uh, on the part of that person having this interaction. For mm -hmm. example, a study was done where some white Canadians were uh, made to interact with uh, some uh, Chinese uh, uh, persons. And, and it was shown that uh, if the Chinese person in, in this moment of introduction, mm -hmm. or, for or first introduction, would just simply mimic the uh, behavioral stance of, of the white Canadian, mm -hmm. then that sort of created a certain rapport, which uh, immediately made the uh, white Canadian interested in this Chinese person. Mm -hmm. And uh, that uh, uh, translated in, in, in these white Canadians, uh, being more likely to fill out uh, a, a coupon that will make them eligible to win something uh, of, uh, from Chinese culture, whether it be a Chinese movie or something like this, uh, that, like a DVD with, with a movie. Um, and it's also um, shown that, for example, another experiment was done with uh, Americans. Um, whether it be white Americans or, uh, let's say, uh, non-white Americans, but Americans intermingling with uh, Latinos. Mm -hmm. uh, it was found that uh, if there was a shared interest, uh, sometimes a shared interest could be that two persons have the same birthday mm -hmm. or they're interested in the same book. Mm -hmm. um, that, then that shared interest can lead to a further interaction. And if that interaction is uh, in, in some way involving something from, in this case, Mexican culture, then the, the American who was interacting with uh, the uh, Latino person and then involved in this activity that, that reflects something of Mexican culture was less likely to be discriminatory mm -hmm. uh, to Latinos and that the effect of this is was shown uh, remained for six months later. So that six months later in an unrelated survey when people were asked certain questions uh, it, 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 it was clear that, that the effect from that earlier interaction still remain with them. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that the engagement is not merely uh, random, but it's about some sort of cultural element uh, within the other, the person of the other, and that led to um, a more relaxed, a, more, uh, a better atmosphere in which there was greater understanding between all participants. Yes, people fear what they do not know, and how this ties in with our discussion of the, uh, uh, the Parti Kovaka, um a charter is that uh, if, if, if people don't know who Muslims are, then they can fear Muslims. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but Muslims need to open up to the wider society and, and help people to get to know them. Th that Chinese, in that experiment where the Chinese person just simply mimicked the behavior of the, of the white Canadian, um, shows what, what can happen if, if Muslims uh, integrate in society the best that they can without sacrificing their basic principles, then uh, this will help Canadians to understand Muslims and to feel more of an affinity with Muslims. And then if they can further take that a step uh, in, 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 in the positive direction by having or, or encouraging Canadians and making it possible for them to come into our mosques, to share in our cultural events and festivities and so on, then this will help to break down many of the barriers that mm -hmm. we see. So I, I guess it goes both, both ways then. So uh, Canadians should also try to make it more welcoming um, for immigrants and immigrants should you know, try to um, let people under, help people to understand them. It's a two-way street. Yes. All right, thank you for that, Brother Shabir. You're we'll welcome. take a break and return advice for returning to school.